trying to find the right moment to tell you this. Their refrigerators, they are really small. Oh. Um, like, like a cottage, right? Smaller. Well, who 
cares? They probably have great takeout in Shanghai, and that beats cooking any day of the week. Oh my god. You don't think they eat horses, do you? <laughs> probably not ones with wooden legs. <laughs> I am serious. I saw this special on the BBC. They eat dogs in China. You go to a restaurant, you pick out the dogs. How much is that dog in the window? <laughs> oh. I'm serious, Tom. It's just like the lobsters <sighs> and fishy freddies. Only these guys? They're not wagging their tails. Their skin is hanging from hooks. Babe, I am sure there's a few things that we're just going to have to adjust it. Right, so when we're invited to somebody's house for dinner, and they serve bow wow. <laughs> we'll just tell them we're allergic to dogs. Oh, Lots so, of people are. Yeah, so little Sal and little Tom are going to grow up without a dog? If we're allergic, then how we'll can we? We'll just get a cat. <gasps> cat meat is a delicacy in China. Oh my god! Now I understand why they didn't emphasize pets in the relocation panel. But still, it's all for a brighter future. Brighter future, yeah, I know. All the more reason to bring Bob the horse. But babe, you know the company rules. They're only going to pay to ship items in the boxes that they provided. Can we box Bob? If you help me, you can. <coughs> about expenditures are made jointly. Right. I thought you meant big ticket items like to buy a house or a tractor. Have you lost your mind? Why on earth do we need a tractor? Hello? Just making a point. Earth's a major Tom and Mrs. Major Tom. I've been looking all over for Bob the Horse. Where was he? <laughs> Shoved in the back of your closet. Yeah. Some detective you are. You must have gotten your promotion just because of your name, Dick. <laughs> Sticks and stones can break my bones. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. We'll skip right over the what the hell are you doing in my bedroom part and skip right to the what the hell are you doing with my horse part. Whoa. Your horse? I thought it was Sally. It should have been my horse. I was one who had to answer for a hobby horse. Not you, but Mom always liked you best. In the left corner, we have <laughs> Little Miss Ride Sally Ride! Ride Sally Ride! Who is determined to retain the title of ownership to a rocking horse that is not hurt. And in the far right, we have the Ticket to ride. He's got a ticket to ride. Because Bob was his Christmas gift. Ladies and gentlemen, two certified lunatics taking sibling rivalry to a whole new level. I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Did you even ride him once? We took many a long solitary ride into the lonely canyons. We did not need a cowgirl outfit with the hat and the boots and the shiny spurs. Shark spurs. Hey, buddy. Long time no see. I wondered where you were. I'm glad he's finally out of the closet. <laughs> where are those spurs? Why? Does Tommy need a little encouragement? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. This is not about me. And I resent the implication. Resentment duly noted. Well, I thought that if I found the spurs, I might find that skirt. The one with the fringes, you know? The one that just twirls just so? Or do you want my cowgirl skirt, too? <laughs> <laughs> Look, be reasonable. We need him. We plan to have children. 
but not right away. Dude. We're having kids too, you know. Two surrogates, three months along. Hmm. Two. Yeah. Tried flipping a coin to see who would donate the sperm first, but it kept coming up wrong side up. So, we got ourselves two surrogates. Sisters. Oh, so the kids will be first cousins. No sibling rivalry. Good thinking. Yeah. When did this all come about? I thought the whole marriage stick was a tax angle. <laughs> Sally, you must have fallen off Bob one too many times. You got too much in your brains. You're not taking I agree. Guys, I'm sure we have another way. We'll find another way to sort this thing out. Without the cap shooter, Sally. Be reasonable. Huh. Nor did you. Well, well, look at it this way. I'm having two kids in six months. I have a more immediate need for Bob. No, you're not getting Bob just because your sperm are fast swimmers. No, -uh, no way. <laughs> but if your kid gets the horse, mine will get the complexes. My kids deserve this horse just as much as yours do. Your kid is not getting first preference. Besides, Bob was my Christmas gift, not yours, Sally, remember? Yeah! Who named it? I don't know. Yeah, I do. You called him Roberta. <laughs> a sissy name. Yeah, Dad objected. Genuinely. <laughs> so I changed it to Bob. And besides, look at this. Huh. It says Sally. You bet it does. Why the hell does it say Sally? Because you always hear about these family squabbles, about who gets the Steinway or the blanket chest. So I talked to Mom. And she suggested that I put a little sticker on all the items that I would like when she passes. And what about Dad? Are you going to wait till he passed away before you made off of all the goods? But there are no Steinways or anything else of value in this house, really. Except for Bob. You can't just go around putting red stickers on all the things you want. What about me? Who gave you first prep? I was born first. Tom, can't you see I need some help? Sally? There is no way that that horse is fitting in that box. But I'm not leaving without him. He's not even yours. So now you're taking Dick's side. Do you like him better than me too? Are you just like mother? You know, oh, you can be a real idiot sometimes, Sally. I'm not putting up with this shit. I'm going home to our home and finish packing. And don't be thinking that I'm going to pay the shit Bob if you can't fit him in that box. <laughs> oh, you can go on and it now, Sid. He looks royal. Yes. Why is life so easy for you? Does mom like me best? <laughs> easy for you to make light of it. Why are your relationships so calm? Mine are so... <laughs> Tumultuous. <laughs> We're not in relationships anymore, Sally. We're in marriages now. For better or worse, as I recall. Do you even want to go to China? Is that what this is all about? I mean, I wouldn't want to drag my ass across a couple of oceans just to go to a place where you can't even get a good cannoli. Yeah, but that's where the jobs in finance are. You're not even in finance. I'm going to be busy with the children. Soon, someday, when the time is right, well, at least we're at the broccoli stage. The broccoli stage? What the hell is that? Harry has this chart, and at certain stages, the mom bulks up on certain foods. He's really into the details about that. Yeah, how about you? I'm along for the ride. Just like you going to China. And Bob not going to China. <coughs> I don't think I could face it without him. I really don't. Well, I'm just as scared as you. I can't do it without Bob. I need more to be in your honor now. He was shoved in the back of your closet. Well, I didn't put him there. It must have been mom. Looking out for you, as usual. 
Then why'd she let you put this red sticker on Bob? <laughs> because she thought that I would go for Grandma's dishes or the Stuben vase. She never really understood that a cowgirl needs a horse. They got cowgirls in China? I don't think so, because they eat horses. <laughs> Dogs and cats, too. And you're going to raise your kids there? <laughs> Do you even know what they put in those school lunches? Does anybody really know what's in chop suey? Tom thinks that they'll have really good manners. <clears throat> ah! Thank you for the racist dog meat! Don't be an idiot. They don't bow in China. That's Japan. All I really know is that they use chopsticks, and I'm to have lessons on how to eat. Can you imagine? So many teensy tiny rules for such a gigantic country with so many people. I don't see why you can't just live in one of those little expat communities with thousands of other Americans surrounded by wolfing down your spaghettios, ease back in their recliners, watching the evening news. Well, Tom thinks that we'll get more out of the experience if we live as the Chinese do. You know, send our kids to their schools, they're going to grow up bilingual, and once we get our bearings straight, we're going to move to the suburbs. You barely passed French 101 in college. How the hell are you going to wrap your tongue around Chinese? Oh, Shanghainese. That's what we're going to learn. Ah, Shanghainese. No tiki, no shate. Oh, that's poetic for you to say to me. What? It's a racial slur, a subtle thing, meaning that the only thing the Chinese are good for is doing your laundry. Hey, when they moved in droves to California, that's all they did. Laundry by hand. It ridicules the speech of hard-working Chinese immigrants. And you don't think they're going to have a good laugh when you try to order sweet and sour spare ribs in Shanghainese? I would think that you would be more sensitive to political correctness. So now I have to be PC because I'm gay? Where are you, where are you learning all this stuff anyway? You're starting to sound like C-3PO. Relocation classes. So we don't make any giant faux pas and sever international relations between our two countries. Biggest faux pas you ever made was marrying a guy named Smothers. A Tom Smothers should not be with a Sally Struthers. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's almost incestuous. You never liked Tom. Why not? Because he's always putting himself ahead of you. He's always thinking of himself. And don't you think that I'm going to be paying to ship Bob if you can't fit him in that box? between our two families. And how often do you think you're going to get back to the States? Oh, um, Tom thinks that it would be best if we raised our kids on our own, you know, without the nuisance of doting grandparents or cousins with really bad manners. You should see his brother's kids. Oh. We don't want them influencing our kids. Tom says, Tom says, listen to yourself. You sound like you're being brainwashed. What is Sally say? Sally likes big Thanksgiving dinners. He's the one that tries to take out. That's the best part. Oh my god, it's better than the scalp toaster. Oh. 
And what about mom and dad? You think they're gonna get on a 24 hour flight to China? Well, there's only Skype, and that's free. You're super good with computers, so you can totally help. Sally, them. they don't even have a computer. Get real. Right. Look, why don't you just refuse to go? You don't really want to go, right? That was, that's what this is all about. You know what? I dare you. Call Tom right now. Tell him you won't go unless he pays the ship up. There is no point. I already know that answer. A guy who won't shell out a couple hundred bucks, maybe? How can you respect a guy like that, let alone love him? You're not worthy of him. You should have left him years ago. But we've been married for 10 years. And still waiting for when the time is right. You ever think maybe the time is never going to be right for good old Tommy? Yeah, I think about that a lot. I mean, look at you and Harry, right? Married less than a year, and you've already got two in the oven. Talk about the daily double. Let's draw. Okay, whoever gets the longer piece, keep up. You got it, sis. One ticky, one horse. Made in China because he's not going to win it right. I got a better idea. You mean? Let's draw to see who keeps Tom. Oh. <laughs> Why bother? There is no need. No ticky, no puppy.
only leaving our beds here and there to get a little fruit to give us enough energy to continue. If I ever believed in the idea of heaven, which I don't, but I can't imagine it could be any better than the way it felt lying there in his arms. Till this morning. All day long, I asked myself something I did, something I said, something I neglected to say, and then I realized it was nothing like that. It was just the way it had to be. For a few short days, the universe achieved a state of perfection, of complete harmony, perfect tranquility. But it was unnatural and it could not last. No one to blame, no tears to shed, <coughs> only soiled sheets to clean. No. To run away, I've got to get away. You don't really want any more for me to make things right. You need some love to hold you tight, and you think that love is to pray, but I'm sorry I don't pray that way. I, you know, I think it's better that way. <clears throat> no one gets hurt, no annoying. Relationships, no uh, idiosyncrasies that come to the surface, no arguments, no explanations, no guilt, no recriminations. It all makes so much sense. It's the only way it could end. I know, I know I should be happy, but instead I, I feel so sad, so, so very sad. Pitiful, meager, useless words. 
There is a wall between us, between all of us. Oh, sometimes we can step, step up on our toes and peer over the edge, or, or maybe even peek through a crack, but it's always there. Even now, you'll never know what I'm thinking, and I will never know the same about you. You may tell me what you're thinking, but even if you do tell me what you're thinking, what you say may not be truthful. And even if you t what you tell me is truthful, your words may not mean the same as they do to me. You see my lips move, but you just don't hear a thing. I'm leaving this goddamn city. It's played out. Maybe I'm played out. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go someplace new. Some place where nobody knows me and I can make a fresh start. Maybe I'll even change, maybe I'll even change my name. East, west, north, south, it doesn't matter. As long as it's far, far away from here. Well, I think of all the time I've spent in this place. And tomorrow it will be just a memory of the day after that, a vague recollection. And in a year, will be completely forgotten. There's one place I'll miss, though. The fountains I've boarded up asylum. The age of blues are broken, and it hasn't worked in years, but I'll miss it. I always felt safe there. Oh, those poor patients. I used to wonder what it must be like in there. The pain, the humiliation. That building was hell. That angel fountain is heaven. We're, we're all insane, you know. Each and every one of us. They just can't lock us all up. It'd be too impractical. There'd be nobody to run the factories, nobody to bake the bread, nobody to clean our teeth, nobody to care for our children. I found a bracelet by the fountain once. It was under some rotted leaves. Here it is. I've worn it every day since. There's an inscription on the back. It says, To my beloved Charlene, with eternal love, Alexander. Oh, I imagine they must have been terribly in love. And then some tragedy struck. Why else would have the bracelet been lost or discarded? Perhaps he was killed in the war. Or left her for another woman. I know. Perhaps in her later years, she became an inmate at the asylum. And in some drug-induced stupor, it simply slipped off her wrist and fell to the ground. Or it stayed for years stayed until I accidentally came across it. Until until I accidentally came across it. I took my money out of the bank today. All of it. Got rid of everything I ever owned. Furniture, clothes, books. Everything. What I couldn't sell, I gave away. This bracelet is all that I have left. I'm so tired, so very tired. In a few hours, it will be morning, and fresh-faced kids will be finding their way to school. Merchants will open their doors. People will line the streets on their way to work. It doesn't matter to me anymore, not anymore. It's time, time for, for me, me to move on. on. Here, maybe this will buy you a few more drinks. Once I ran to you, now I run from you. This tainted love you've given, give it all a girl could give you. Take my tears and that's not really all tainted love. Tainted love.
thank you for waiting. I'm so sorry. Hi. Stand back. I'm soaked. I ran all the way from the stop. I was stuck in the subway car for like 20 minutes, not moving. I don't know, the electricity was down. It was nothing, but you never know, right? I thought, God, please don't let there be anything happen. Like last month, that guy who jumped in front of the train. Crazy. I'm totally babbling, aren't I? I'm sorry. This has been a really weird day. Babbling is my first line of defense. Plus, way too much oolong waiting for my audition. For some reason, T really cranks me up. Supposed to soothe you, right? Herbal verbal. That's what we called it in college, smoking pot. Back when I used to smoke pot. Herbal verbal. I'm making a great impression, aren't I? Anyway, so, hi, how are you? Uh, l listen, I'm sorry, but I, I think you've got the wrong table. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're Nick, right? Nick, Jeff's cousin, the fireman. Right? Uh, who are you? Sarah! Uh, Amadi? We've been texting? You're Sarah? Appearing before you live in person in the ranks of flesh. Anyway, so sit. What are you drinking? Bud Light, and you call yourself a fireman. <laughs> Firefighter. Really? Firefighter? Yeah, that's what we call ourselves. I, I like that action word. Sexy and PC. Graphic. Is there a waiter? I could totally kill a double black worm OJ with a splash of vodka. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm a Pinot Grigio girl. <laughs> you drink alcohol? Does Pinot Grigio actually count as alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> During a trek through Afghanistan, I lost my corkscrew and was compelled to live on food and water for several days. <laughs> You're from Afghanistan? W.C. Fields, joke. I, I love W.C. Fields. I thought Muslims didn't drink. I never drank anything stronger than a beer before I was 12. <laughs> Come on, seriously? I know lots of Muslims to drink. Lots! If their waiter ever shows up. A waitress, <laughs> Allison. She was just here. Allison, you come here a lot? Kind of a home away from home. You don't like it? No, no, I, I do actually. Kind of a... Uh, for a sports bar. I like sports bars. I like bars. <laughs> and fires. <laughs> and, and long walks on the beach. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's like a uh, firefighter hotspot. Um, sort of. The, the station's right nearby. I just got ah, off of work. Good place to hook up some vermin, burning love. Or, <laughs> or, or do firemen use Match.com. <laughs> <laughs> Jen said you were funny. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I swore I wasn't going to tell any fireman jokes. Firefighter. I'm being an idiot. Post audition, adrenaline frenzy. Plus, I'm really nervous. Plus, Sarah, stop speaking. Just close your mouth. You're an audition? Disaster, don't ask. Oh, sorry. Can you say the word patronizing? Maybe you want to kick the director's balls up into his ugly esophagus. <laughs> you're, uh, you're not what I was expecting. You weren't expecting a bitter, babbling, soggy wall of sound? Um, <laughs> you, um, you, you don't look like your photo. That's what they said at the audition. Did have that Juliet look, I guess, because that's all it took. One look. Wait, what photo? Oh my God, she didn't show you the spring break whipped cream motel room, did she? That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, uh, I wasn't expecting this. Oh, right, that 
was a failed reference. No, it was. <laughs> I guess it was. You don't like my hijabness? You're what? You're freaked out by the veil. Surprised. Maybe you think a veiled woman shouldn't be in a bar. Oh, I didn't say that. Or on the street, or God forbid, seen in the airport. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And certainly not seen in an audition. You know what? Women of Juliet's day wore veils. I looked it up. I researched it, which is far more than that. Ask Fight Director did. I tried to explain it to him, but would he listen? Would he? No. Listen. Can I ask you something? Only if you let me answer. <laughs> Deal. Don't men find failed women sexy? Seriously? The director said he wanted a sexy Juliet. Oh. So when you, you being all Western men, see a veiled woman <laughs> like me on the street, covered, don't you wonder what she looks like under all those clothes? This is a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the mystery of the hidden, the unknown. Oh, Salome and her seven veils, the nine parts of desire. Don't you just want to rip their clothes off with your teeth? Seriously? <laughs> a taxi driver said that to me this very morning. Honestly? Speak your heart. Then, no. Oppressed isn't sexy. So now I'm oppressed. Look, all I know about veils is what I see on TV. I see a veil, I think oppressed. So I should go on Dr. Phil, call Oprah? No. You think my dad makes me wear this? I honestly don't know, does he? My dad's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't make me wear it or beat me or interfere with my love life, so no worries. I'm sorry. Do I seem oppressed to you? Jen said that you were warm and caring and smart. I knew I liked her. <laughs> yeah, no. That you were pretty. Aw, shucks. And you are. Thank you. She said that while you might not exactly be the nudie calendar kind of fireman, <laughs> that you were definitely the kind that would carry women and children out of burning buildings to save them. That you had real talent. <laughs> that you had, in fact, carried people out of a burning building to save them. <laughs> <laughs> and that you were quiet, the strong, silent type, which is good, right? Opposites attract. <laughs> that you would be a wonderful mom that you listen. And sometimes I think that's all I really want from life is someone to listen. She did say that you were Muslim. She did. Somehow I got the impression that you were Catholic. Oh. Like me. Oh, and it's not like I am oldest day or I hope groupie or anything, but <laughs> I, I think when it comes to love and marriage, and my mother, that <laughs> Muslim and Catholic don't mix. Oil and water, irreconcilable differences. So no offense, and I, I'm sure you're a wonderful girl, but in terms of dating, you're a wonderful Muslim girl. And I just don't think it's gonna work out, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, wait, 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 listen, listen, sit, sit. Um. confession to make. I'm not Muslim. You're not? I am Catholic. 
You're Catholic? Born and raised, fish every Friday. <laughs> well, I don't get it. So what is this, some kind of a joke? No, no, more of a social experiment. It's research for a role, for a play we made. I'm playing a Palestinian woman who is oppressed by these races. So you don't wear a veil? In the play, yeah, I wear one. I've been wearing this all day just to see what it's like. Serious eye Everyone ought to try being a minority for a day. I mean it. But you don't normally wear a veil? Mm, normally I wear a wimple. <laughs> kidding. Kidding. <laughs> what? What? Uh, when you took your hood off, I thought, oh my god, she said brain surgery. Watch it. <laughs> Do you know how long I practiced putting this on? YouTube all nighter. I think it looks pretty good. Well, you definitely had me going. <laughs> I wasn't gonna wear it here, but I wanted to see how you'd react. Thanks, I always wanted to be a social experiment. <laughs> After today, somehow it became important to see how you react. Oh, the audition you mean? Oh. I can't believe you wore that to an audition. I thought maybe it would at least help me stand out. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, the whole freaking day. More? Oh my god. First the gym. I mean, I go there three times a week. Now people wouldn't even look at me. Or else they totally stared like I was wearing panties on my head or something. <laughs> one, oh my god, one woman asked if I wear my veil in the shower. <laughs> Did you? No. My Al Qaeda shower cap, smart ass. <laughs> then, then lunch shift at the restaurant. My owner, who barely speaks English, <laughs> English mind you, uh, had a little after work chat with me about proper dress and how a hostess wearing a veil might freak out the customers. Look un-American in a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> then in line at the post office, I got the other shame, right? This lady who, I swear, was wearing a dress that made her look like a pot holder, was being so extra nice and speaking slowly and being so helpful. Like, I can't find my way to the counter or something. Followed by the pig taxi driver, followed by the audition <coughs> mega flop that just ugh, really tested my faith in humanity in the theater. And then, well. The subway. Yeah, the subway. But here we are. <laughs> here we are. So take it off, let your hair down. You did your homework, relax, have a drink. I would, if, if, if Casper the friendly waitress would appear. Well, maybe if you took your veil off. What do you mean? I was just thinking that, uh, her brother was a first responder on 9-11, and uh, he died in the tower. A firefighter. His picture's on the wall of my station. So she what? Thinks I had something to do with it? Painful memories? I don't know, I'm just guessing, but uh, I do know that she's not the only one injured who feels that way. We all have painful memories. Doesn't mean we have to be bigots. Well, I sometimes feel that way. That doesn't mean that I'm a bigot. It's just hard. So I have to sit here with no drink because I have a piece of cloth on my head? Come on, chill. You're not Muslim. You're just pretending. Take it off. What if I was Muslim? Why don't we just go somewhere else? What if I, how's a, a veil different than a hat? What if I wore, say, a Red Sox hat here? That's different. They're oppressed. They, <laughs> <laughs> and what about none? They wear veils. Do they get served? In fact, in fact, I wore this same veil wearing Julie, playing Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music in high school. Catholic high school. Come on, there's a good falafel place around the corner. Let's go there. <laughs> so you don't personally like the veil? I prefer to talk to the real you. Would it be different if I wore it around my neck? Or uh, around my waist like a little gypsy? Maybe you'd prefer it if all I wore was this scarf. 
Whoa, 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 what the hell are you doing? Jesus. Another social experiment? Seriously? Why not? It's just a piece of cloth. Not sexy. Not good for your fire man image? No, just nuts. You know, I'm sorry, but you really need to rethink your priorities. I gotta go. Raghead. What? Hey, Raghead, show us your tits. Jen never said that you were a whack. Someone... Someone said that to me while I was waiting for the subway on the platform on the way here. It's affected my outlook. Sorry. A group of guys, college guys, baseball hats, drunk, coming from a game or something. Regular normal guys. Arrested development. Snide, sneaky stage whispers. Do you fuck camels? Show us your humps. So what, you tried a social experiment on them? I wanted to try a rectal experiment on them. <laughs> <laughs> but I very maturely walked away. And then one guy shouted after me. Go back to your own fucked up country, you sand nigger bitch. Nobody on the platform said anything. Nobody did anything. They all just looked away. Men can be real scumbags. I know. I'm sorry. Jen said you were a regular, normal guy. Oh, no, so you're comparing me to these assholes? I needed to know. Well, you know what? I came here to meet a woman that I heard a lot of nice things about. Someone that I might actually like. Maybe even have a future with. I was hopeful and sincere. I didn't come to be a guinea pig. I'm sorry. I guess we're not exactly getting along like a, a house on fire, are we? <laughs> so you won't take the day off? I don't think so. Then I don't see much of a future here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you got hassled. I'm sorry your little social experiment didn't work out. I'm sorry we met. Goodbye. Have a nice life. You forgot your hat.
nicer occupation. Matter of fact, neither do I. Then standing on the corner, watching all the girls, watching all the girls, watching all the girls go by. So how you doing? <laughs> oh, I see. You're playing hard to get. Are you hitting on me? Would that be so bad? We're in the ER. So? And so I either have food poisoning or the stomach flu. You have a very serious head injury. Well, you got a problem with head injuries? <laughs> are, you, are you afraid part of my brain might fall out on you? No. I just don't think it's a very appropriate place to hit on somebody, that's all. Well, then stop talking. <laughs> hey! Hey! Did I, did I pass out again? I think so. Yeah, I'm not supposed to do that. I might not wake up. You'll be terrible. 
Would you talk to me to keep me awake? Maybe we should get a nurse and let her know how bad it is. Ah, I did. They don't care. But, uh... Maybe you do? <laughs> okay. Let's see talk. So, what brings you here? I've been throwing up for two days straight. Ah, right, 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 right. <coughs> so are you single? <laughs> are you seeing anyone? Why are you asking? Well, because if you are, he should be here with you because you're sick. He has something to do. But you're in the ER. Said it was important. Now, how important could it be? It's his monthly poker night. Oh, yeah, that's important. Well, what about you? I don't play poker. <laughs> <laughs> Are you seeing somebody? Is she coming? Oh, she's not coming here. Why? She's the one who did this. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'd say it was a bad breakup. What did she do? Eh, nothing much. She took a shot at me. She shot you in the head? Oh, no, 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 no. She took a shot at me, but she missed. She's a terrible shot. <laughs> and I fell over the dog and wham, hit the side of the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I should see her anymore. Why did she get a shot at you? Uh, it's a little fuzzy, but I think I dared her to. I'd be darned if she didn't do it, too. But I'll tell you what, if your boyfriend doesn't show, I'll be here for you. Really? Sure. Where else is a guy with a serious head room gonna be? That's really sweet. Belinda. No, my name is Jeff. <laughs> my name is Belinda. Oh, <laughs> hi, Belinda. Sorry, I'm going in and out of consciousness here. You want me to get a nurse? Nah, it's getting better, actually. You know, just sitting here, talking to you. No, I haven't thrown up in... Oh. <gasps> oh. oh, in a few minutes. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Me too. I know this might sound crazy, but um, do you think after we both get out of here, maybe we could go grab a drink or a coffee or something and just talk? Yes, I'd love to, but I'm seeing someone. Yeah, someone who's more concerned about whether he gets a full house than whether you're home safe in the house. I know. I'm sorry, I went too far. <coughs> it's none of my business. It wasn't always that way with Mark. Boyfriend's name is Mark. He used to really care, but as time's passed, he seems less interested. You know, I even had to drive myself here tonight. Do you know how hard it is to ship and vomit at the same time? <laughs> I thought to myself, well, oh, not that sick. I mean, he really enjoys his game, and he only goes once a month, but, well, now that I think about it, aren't I more important than some game? Can he skip it in order to drive me to the hospital to make sure I'm not going to die? Now that I think about it, this is just one of many examples where he's really put himself before us. And I've been unhappy. I've been really unhappy these last few months, so I try not to think about it. You know what? Maybe it's time to take a break with Mark. Thanks, Jeff. I don't think I would have had the guts to do that tonight if I hadn't talked to you. Jeff. Jeff. Oh, God. Nurse! a little fuzzy. <laughs> I think I'm almost there. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling better. I'm feeling better than I've ever been. <laughs> Me too. <sighs> so, uh, 
Why did you do that for me? Really? Yeah. Well, uh, I feel the same way about you. Uh, um, you know, there's another emergency room across town. You want to hit that? Maybe less busy. Talk me into 
joining you. No offense, but spending time with your family will just bum me out. No? Oh, Jack, I need a little me time. Look, buddy, we've been through a lot, so I'm going to confide a secret to you. I haven't had much luck in the dating game lately. And turning 50 and not having a woman to spend it with, well, what can I say? You know that uh, escort service our friend Vinny runs on the side? <laughs> no, I did. Well, you're the one who told me how lovely their young ladies were. So, I said the hell with it. <laughs> I mean, what did I pick? Oh, well, they gave me all the popular choices. Naughty nurse, slutty schoolgirl, cat woman. <laughs> well, and being the profession I'm in, and uh, needing a little therapy myself, I asked for a doctor. I mean, why have a nurse when you can get a doctor? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I know. What can I say? It's maybe a little birthday gift to myself. <laughs> but, but listen, I can't talk. I told him to have a meeting at my place, so I gotta get out of here. I made the mistake of telling the firm how stressed I've been, so they scheduled a therapeutic massage for me. Nice? No! Have you ever had a therapeutic massage? It's like being trampled on by a rhino wearing Vaseline. <laughs> I made the mistake of having one a few years ago. No, I haven't even met the masseuse, and when I found out it was a man, I was even less interested. I can't cancel. Every time I try, they just reschedule. So I'm going to duck out of here. If he shows up and I'm not here, eventually you'll get the hint. Look, look. Oh, shit, I gotta go. I'll catch you later, Jack. Okay, Noreen. I may not be back before closing, so just lock up the office in an hour if I'm not back in time. Are you the doctor? Why, yes I am. <laughs> <laughs> Psychiatrist, was it? Chef, whatever. Oh, you have uh, excellent posture. Gee, thanks, sweetie. Uh, very few people have noticed that. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I have to say, they, they told me I'd be getting a doctor, but you're, you're not quite what I expected. Oh, uh, how so? Well, I, I mean, I thought you'd be a man, for one thing. <laughs> Are you disappointed? I mean, we all the both, you know. Well, I'm sure you do. No, I mean, I, I don't normally do women. I mean, sometimes if they're, if they're all right with it, but uh, normally I'd perform on men. So are you okay with me? No, I'm fine if you are. Okay, great. Great. So, uh, what do you want me to do for you, hon? Oh, well, if you would just, uh, lie down here, take off your top. Wow, you don't waste any time. <laughs> oh, well, now you know my best. I understand. When you get paid by the hour, you want to get your money's worth. <laughs> exactly. But uh, can we warm up first? Warm up? Uh, you know, before the fun starts, some people like to have a drink. Uh, uh, do you mind? No, no, go ahead. Uh, not for me, thanks. Don't let me stop you. Uh, thanks. I, I won't be. I'll be quick. That's all right. I, I do have another appointment today, but uh, don't let me rush you. Okay. So, um, have you had a long day? Oh, uh, yeah. I started at 7 in the morning. 
<clears throat> what about you? I work the night shift, I guess you can call it. <laughs> so, wouldn't have thought. That must be interesting. Interesting. You can say that, at least. Have a lot of other clients today? Uh, people don't normally ask me that. Oh, really? They, they like to think they're the only ones. I guess I could see that. <laughs> have you ever called on somebody like me before? <laughs> no! Uh, my ex-wife used to see someone regularly, but can't say that helped anything. <laughs> I guess it would. Sorry. No, no. It's not like she was seeing you personally. Now she saw someone downtown our church recommended. <laughs> At church? <laughs> um, don't they frown on that sort of thing? Uh, wait, are you a Scientologist? No, a Christian. <laughs> Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, so 
So that's how you get your kicks. Well, I mean, in a way, I suppose our professions are similar. Isn't that how you <laughs> get your kicks, as it were? We both get paid to help people. Ha, hell yeah. Rubbing down some stranger for money. Well, you don't have to be insulting. Now, what? <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, you're the professional here, aren't you? Okay, look, let's just do half price, and um, we'll finish the session a little earlier. Fine, fine. You know, I should have called it off the minute you started acting weird. Do me a favor. Ask for someone else next time. Oh, I didn't ask for you. Plenty of other people I could have seen. Well, good, and maybe they'll be all impressed with your back muscle talk, you freak. You? <laughs> You're calling me a freak? You've been messing with me this whole time! You, you think it's funny to come in here dressed all sexy and try to tempt me? Are you screwing with me or something? This is like the most non-sexy thing I own for the record. <laughs> and besides, most men want me to dress sexy. Oh yeah, I've got you in this office, so you must be doing something. Oh my gosh, you are such a condescending threat. Will you stop talking about this office like it is the greatest place on earth? Oh, uh, you think it's something pretty special. You are such an egomaniac. I mean, really, do you know for the moment I, I am not impressed with you? I meet with some of the wealthiest politicians and lawyers in the city. What? You? you? You're just a peon. There we go. I knew that was coming. I'm glad you finally came right out and said it. What? You think I'm judging you? Like, this makes no sense. I mean, what kind of mind game are you playing with? <laughs> mind game? You think I'm playing mind games? Is this one of your role-playing exercises or something? You want me to lie down on the couch and start crying about my mommy? Well, that actually happens later afterwards. But yeah, it happens quite a bit. <laughs> What happened here? I, I, I'm not trying to insult you. I, I'm sure your job is hard. I just felt like you were judging me a little bit. Now why would I do that? Come on. I mean, look at you. Look at me. You, you're, you're way out of my league. We wouldn't even be talking to each other if it wasn't for the circumstances. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'd like to talk to you if money were involved. Well, I, I would like that, actually. Really? Yeah. I mean, it would mean we were both doing it out of our own free will, not because we had to be. Look, I, I don't know what happened. I'm sorry for snapping at you earlier. I mean, if you ever want to get together and talk, really, <clears throat> give me a call. But there's just no money at all. Oh, well, what are you doing tonight for dinner? Dinner? Yeah, why not? Uh, right now? Yeah, it's, it, it's almost six. Well, it's just that it feels kind of like a date. Would there be an issue with that? Well, since we met... <laughs> okay. I see. You want to be pretending to be all nice. You say you want to spend time with me, but I see it's just an act. Uh, really? Well, what about you? I mean, you didn't even spend any time getting to know me. You just couldn't wait to get your hands on me. That's why I'm here! Exactly! Not me more! <laughs> my name or introducing yourself. There's a nameplate on the door. Dr. Fisher. Kind of impersonal, don't you think? What should I call you? Michelle. David. Well, David, where would you like to go for dinner? I know a great Italian place uptown. That sounds great. And you know, I gotta say, I love that name. Michelle. Michelle Fisher. That's got a great ring to it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Just having dinner. <laughs> if you want to go Dutch, that's all right. I thought we were getting Italian. <laughs> no. <laughs> go Dutch means we, we each pay for our own meals, so it doesn't feel like it, no money involved. Oh, are you kidding? Let me pay, if you don't mind. Uh, if you insist. Uh, by the way, what made you decide to become a psychiatrist? A what? <laughs>
You have to do that here. Yes. <coughs> hey, Kate. I, I don't know how to say this, but uh, I kind of need a little bit of privacy here. You see, I'm meeting with a uh, with a, a a person. It's it's a meeting. It's a it's a thing, and uh, I don't want to be all distracted by some little kid playing hopscotch. So, <coughs> what do you say? Can you take this literally anywhere else? No. Please? Oh man, do you have to say please? I kind of feel like I'm running out of options here. Well, that was rude because you said the magic word and I'm still not going anywhere. But why? Because I don't want to. Yeah, but why don't you want to? Because I like playing here. Yes, but why? Because! How many times do you have why? You're worse than my little brother! <laughs> Yeah. What time is it? It's 426. Are you lying? Wouldn't you have to like look at your phone or watch or something? No, because I've been looking at my phone or watch or something every five seconds already. Because it's almost 430 when something 
really important is going to happen, and you are hopping around annoyingly playing hopscotch. Gee, sorry, I thought playgrounds were an okay place for hopscotch. It's a park, okay? <laughs> Grown-ups like parks. Is this like the difference between dress-up and cosplay? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna react. 
talking about? Okay, the point is, you shouldn't be doing this at all. I'm not gonna turn you in or anything because it could fuck up your life and you're only 10. What? Shut up! <laughs> Pretty sure you've heard that word before. Yeah, but... But still nothing! Look, just go home and do, I don't know, wholesome kid things. Maybe you should talk to your dad and tell him that you're starting to like boys. Because random dudes on the internet are not who you should be going for. I can't talk to my dad. Yeah, you can. Just don't make it weird and everything will be just fine. Literally anything is better than meeting with strangers in the park. Just do yourself a favor and talk to your dad. So I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna try to salvage the rest of this day. See you, creepy kid. And this was for you, which explains the Hello Kitty candies that you wanted. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Damn it, damn it. <laughs> Children or something, it's so they'll like us better. So, you just lied to get girls to kiss you? You didn't mean it? Well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I guess I didn't mean it all that much. No, not really. Because I'm not really that great a person, if you must know. Which is why you should avoid meeting random strangers from the internet. Literally anyone could be lying to you. Yes, it's very common. Has anyone ever lied to you on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Think about that question. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. It's kind of a miracle that you haven't been killed since the last time I saw you, if you do this a lot. I guess it would. 
Bueno. Ok. What happened to your original dad, then? He died. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm very sorry to hear that. Like, but it's alright. No, no, really. That's wrong. Like, how long ago did this happen? Oh, he's Oh, God! Oh, shit. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to yell at you a week after you- Oh, my God, I feel like such a schmuck. It's okay. No, I can totally understand why you would do something desperate. Like, look- Wait a minute. What? So he was still alive a year ago? Yeah, I said he died last week, remember? But this thing! This internet thing! You were doing this last year! You were looking for a new dad while your actual dad was still alive? What was he doing then? I don't know. He never told me because he was too drunk to remember. Oh. That's why I wanted to find someone to replace him, and I couldn't do anything with my mom because she kept having to work because my dad had spent all her money on beers. That's... that's really bad. That's what I thought. And he kept coming home and beating up my brother and me, so... Are you sure you want to be telling me this? Well, yeah, you're the nicest person I've met, and that's been good so far. <laughs> but I just yelled at you and told you to go away. Yeah, but you're still here talking to me. This is a really sad story. Well, duh! Okay, stop making me feel bad! <laughs> you're the one meeting shady people on shady websites. So are you! So? <laughs> Alright, I guess you got one. But I'm a grown-up! So you should know that! SHUT UP! <laughs> <laughs> Too smart for my own good. I know, my teachers tell me that all the time. Okay, if you're still so smart, then why are you still meeting with strange men in the park? Because, okay, because I got sick of having such a sucky dad. And I figured I might find some guy to beat him up for a chance and make him go away. But now he went and drove his car into the telephone pole. I don't want to be your new dad. I don't want to be anybody's dad, not even my own hypothetical kid's dad. The stuff that I wrote online about wanting to be a dad was, was made up. I was lying so that I could meet women, just like most everybody you meet on here is going to be lying to you. I know. Just because I'm like a little kid doesn't mean I'm like a little kid. What's that supposed to mean? It means I'm not stupid. You don't think I don't know how to lie? Everybody lies all the time. I'm sorry I'll hit you. I'll never do it again. I'll get a job. I'll remember your birthday next year. I love you and your brother. You know that, right? And since everybody's going to do it, can it be by someone who's going to be nice when they do it? I mean, you're nice, right? No. Uh, yes. I don't know, freak. But showing up at your house and pretending to be your dad without actually meeting your mom just after your actual dad has died would not actually be nice. It would be strange and really socially unacceptable. <laughs> creepy, creepy, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> so if I was a nice guy, I wouldn't do that. And I'm not doing it, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I 
think your situation really sucks, but I don't think there's anything I can do to directly improve it. So I guess that's it. Well, this internet dating thing has been a waste of time. I'm glad you know that. Sorry, I missed you here, kind of thrilled. Hey, if anything, it's a really interesting story that I can never tell anyone I could tell you that everything was going to be okay. But I have no idea of knowing that, really. And I feel like lying at this point would be in really poor taste. And anything I did do is only going to make the situation a lot worse. So, I hope that everything works out okay for you. Yeah, I guess that's about all I can ask for. Oh, um... I'm not going to be needing these for anyone else. So. Uh, uh, see you next year? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why the hell not? <laughs> you were joking, right? That was a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.